Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to not far away from the Nuevo Cream. I'm actually on my way home now from attending Polestar 3 launch and today Porsche published the lap time of GT3 RS 992. Now in case you missed the video that I made last week when they actually did the run, check it out because I covered lots of interesting facts and features. I also actually disclosed the lap time back then already and now it has been confirmed by Porsche and many of you have uh, DM me, messaged me, asked about well the traditional lap time analysis. So uh, here it goes, a couple of things from my side after looking at the lap. So first of all, let's talk about the lap time itself. Six minutes forty nine. Is this fast? Is it slow? It is ridiculously fast. Important thing that you need to know is that in the past up until like three or four years ago most manufacturers actually everyone was setting the lap times on a 20.6 kilometer layout of the track so you, they did not cover the t13 straight therefore they were roughly five seconds per lap faster and this is why you can also see on this onboard that they measure two distances because uh, even in last week's video when i was mentioning lap times i did not use any reference over 20.6 kilometer lap times and some people were saying like why is this slower than the older car why is this interesting so it's not you really need to know what lap times we're measuring with so and since we're doing that so 649 for gt3 rs 659 is a for 992 gt3 of the 992 generation so it's 10 seconds faster than a gt3 for like what hundred thousand euros more is this worth it? 10,000 euro per second? That's all up to you. Uh, obviously, I might be wrong with the price, but still important to, to note. 6.54 for a 901.2 GT3 RS MR driven by Kevin Estre. Uh, also by Kevin Estre, 6.55 in a 992 GT3 MR, um, which was probably two seconds off the optimal lap time because it had a gearbox uh, issue in Hatzenbach. <laughs> 647 for AMG Black Series. You might you might say only one second off, but Black Series was la was lapping in conditions that were far from optimal, extremely cold, also wet in certain spots, and now actually the car is almost five seconds faster. I would say four and a half. They didn't manage to achieve the, that last second to beat the GT2 RS MR's lap time uh, because it was too hot on the recent run. And speaking of GT2 RS MR, it did 643. So the GT3 RS is only six seconds off, which is significant. And then obviously when GT3 RS will get in the market, it might be as fast as a GT2. Now jumping quickly actually to Instagram of my friend Sebastian Vettel, the ex-owner of GT2 RS MR, he made a very important point about that. He said, uh, yes, the GT2 RS MR is still quicker by six or seven seconds, but the GT2 are super quick on one lap um and after that it's going slower and slower because the power and torque destroy and overheat well you get the heat soak on the engine and uh, most importantly you overheat your tires so if gt2 rsmr and 992 gt3 rs will do race on three laps i can tell you that gt3 rs will arrive a couple of seconds before gt2 and i speak by experience by doing like fast laps with friends now, uh, to talk quickly about the lap itself, after looking at it, I think I looked at it two or three times, so I didn't go like really analyzing quickly into detail. A couple of things I would like to say that are extremely impressive and some things, uh, of course, the good things and the bad things. Now, coming into Hatzenbach uh, by two kilometer sign is the first time I see, I think anyone from the recent drivers, and in this case, Jörg Bergmeister behind the wheel, um, apply left foot braking while still being on the gas to settle the car, to put the front a bit down without sacrificing the speed too much or unsettling too much. Uh, and this was quite interesting to see uh, by going downhill. There was, I think, a tiny bit of understeer uh, going into Hocheichen, probably because going a bit too fast. Uh, so you could say maybe like, what, 0.1 second last there. Then going into Flugplatz, ridiculous corner speed 210 kilometers per hour that is like what 20 kilometers per hour faster than a gt3 as fast as a race car and this shows the crazy aerodynamics of the gt3 rs we'll get to that uh, later on more, more importantly of the aerodynamic settings of the gt3 rs exit foxhole 
um, I think downshift too much into third should have kept prowling into fourth because you can notice that he's going back on the gas again but the acceleration is not that really noticeable <laughs> More importantly, however, after Adenau forced, he's not using any DRS, whereas usually on the straights, and that is a very important straight for lap time, in all the other straights he's using DRS, and there he isn't. And I was thinking, why? Could it be that the straight after the Adenau forced Damascus felt is running parallel to the main straight, but in the opposite direction? And yes, it does. And this means that if we had headwind on Dutinjehe, we have ta tailwind on that straight so probably he was trying to get a bit extra width or like aerodynamic or non-aerodynamic profile from the rear and get a bit of extra tailwind probably we will not know uh, unless your quote tell us or porsche um then i would say exit from metzgesfeld was not really ideal and also colin hart maybe a bit too much downshifted into second um, and also didn't look as an optimal line so probably 0.1 second loss there i don't know um then after that everything is actually quite impressive extremely fast etc etc i'm not gonna go too much into that very good driving uh but um in castleshin big bug splatter i'm sure that has costed some concentration we can see also that screen wipers are doing extremely good let me turn the light on because it's actually getting very dark outside uh the wind wipers can work pretty good at 250 kilometers per hour but i'm sure that uh it has well shocked the driver maybe it definitely reduced some visibility corner visibility so in that case maybe you could say that uh it was not really uh, um maybe it influenced the future corners however mood curve again crazy speed 210 kilometers per hour ridiculous downforce really really good everything else again very impressive the climb to hole after the use of downforce it's really impressive plants garden 2 we can see another time that uh, the driver is using left foot braking while still being on the throttle to settle the car to take the right hander then later at mini carousel i would say too much downshift probably lost again a bit of time there and uh, Gallenkopf again we can see left foot braking uh, while going on the on a, still being on the throttle and then moving on most importantly the main straight but actually let's talk a bit further down at Tiergarten again left foot braking keeping it flat almost till the top while applying a bit brakes while going on, on the flat out and uh, therefore maintaining lots of speed now we need to know that at the winter of this year beginning of this year that tarmac was resurfaced there and before there was a nasty jump or a bump for which you really had to break and now you can see that you can take uh, the whole um, the whole track flat out so all the cars bef that were doing their lap times before this year they were affected by it so probably if you are going to compare them to these cars i think in total you can definitely win at least a second maybe one and a half there so this put when you put things into perspective with previous lap times you need to take that into consideration it's a very important bit uh so that's very important now um then finally the um, the biggest question that i have the things that is actually quite impressive quite interesting is uh the main straight as mentioned in uh, last week's video uh, when they were actually doing the lap record uh, there were quite heavy headwinds uh, the weather app was showing i think 26 and, or 27 kilometers per hour headwind and it is remarkable and that's why we we're thinking that well the car can definitely go faster because it had headwinds and they were trying to go sub minute 650 that eventually they managed to achieve which is great but the main question that i have right now is that looking at the top speed that the car is able to achieve it's still ridiculously impressive what i mean is that when you look at all the other cars that are driving on the main straight gt2 rs mr gt3 their top speed is for example for gt3 is 320 kilometers per hour it manages to do 280 kilometers per hour on the main straight at the bridge 
This means there's a delta of 40 kilometers per hour because well, it takes time to achieve eventually the faster top speed. The same goes for GT2 RS, it does 310, whereas its top speed um, unofficially 350 people have tested that. Uh, in case of GT3 RS, it manages to do 283, 284 kilometers per hour by the bridge. And keep in mind, again, heavy headwinds, it, they will probably affect the possibly achieved top speed and of course acceleration by like five or six kilometers per hour. Uh, but more importantly, again, the high downforce, the GT3 RS has at 285 from the press release, 285 kilometers per hour, it has total downforce of 860 kilograms, three times as much as GT3. And having the same horsepower amount, I, I don't think that the car should be as fast with additional headwind. I might be missing something there because again, lap time was published today with the onboard, I only looked at it while traveling. Maybe I'm overthinking, but people that are speculating certain things might say like, hmm, was the car running more horsepower? Was that really street vehicle car? The, the thing is what we need to know is that we're talking about the straight here. So even if there is some fishy thing going on, we will find out very easily next year when people will get deliveries of their private cars and they will go on a track day and we can see what kind of top speeds will be achievable by people because it's simply straight. It's not about corner speed where you need to have massive balls to go 240 through Schwedenkreuz or something, but actually just going on the straight. So I think it will be, it's something that we really need to keep in mind. So all the feature owners, Sap, Alex, everyone else who, I don't know, uh, Baram, all the local Nürburgring guys that I know that they have a GT3 RS coming up. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, keep an eye out on that. What is going to be the top speed on a track day on the main straight? Of course, you could say that GT3 RS has shorter gear ratios than GT3 and thereby maybe it's able to achieve similar speed on the main straight, but it's a very good question to have. Uh, final two things to talk about. First of all, press release. Kind of boring. Um, no offense, but the thing is, you praise the GT3 RS with being such a remarkable technological piece of Marvel engineering with all these extra settings of aerodynamics, of diff settings, of traction control, of rebound and compression settings of suspension. All the Nürburgring drivers and all the nerds, even especially people in the States who will probably never be, well, most of them who can afford a GT3 RS, but who will not be that often at the Nürburgring. I know they're even crazier than the Nürburgring people. They want to know what settings were you running on the Nürburgring so they can brag about their car to their bar people that they know they have extra knowledge or etc. Et so you know what I mean? People really appreciate it. And again, thinking back of the Black Series press release, uh, Mercedes, or in this case AMG, did a tremendous job by saying the sway bar settings, the traction control settings, everything to explain how it was actually done and also to explain to future owners what their car maybe should be running on the Nürburgring. So, so that, that would have been really appreciated probably in my case. Last thing uh, worth noting is of course the driver. Uh, and it's a very remarkable uh, point at this point. It was Jörg Bergmeister who also did lap time for GT4 RS and was also running together with Lars Kern for 992 GT3 uh, where he was slower than Lars. We don't know by how much, probably a second or so. Um, and actually a lot of people asked already in my last video why Porsche did not let Lars Kern or even Kevin Estri run. Well, Kevin maybe was too busy with his racing program and maybe Porsche asked Lars to call in sick to, did I really say that? Uh, yeah, I did say that. Um, I don't know why, uh, it doesn't matter. What does matter is that again, Sebastian made a very good point on his Instagram. Please note that Jörg Beckmeister is not the fastest Porsche driver, but he was involved from the very beginning with GT, uh, GT2 RS project and also Porsche made him drive during the Nürburgring Endurance Series in the 992 GT3 Cup car, which is very similar to a road car when it comes to aerodynamic numbers and also, again, the grip levels. Cup 2 R probably as sticky as a, as a full slake. Not quite, but very close. Um, so York was able to accomplish 
uh, around 2,000 kilometers on the race uh, in the race with uh, 92 endurance spec, and that allowed them to know the the car very well. So uh, even if Kevin or Lars would have been faster drivers, uh, York would have tremendous advantage of knowing the car by lapping it in industry pool as a prototype and also during racing it has a lot of seat time so absolutely very good point um, just the good to take it out there so I hope in this case it's also would be good if York will be the one to lap the GT3 RS MR because 992 GT3 was lapped by uh, by Lars and then Kevin drove the MR and then it's like well there is a variable of a driver for sure so it would be good to have the same driver that's i think kind of it um ended up being quite a long video actually if i switch off the light it's going to be actually probably very dark yeah so i'm gonna go home edit this video hope you guys enjoyed this uh quick analysis again as mentioned extremely fast time very good performance by porsche by drive by the drivers by manta racing for doing support of the of the car uh, and of course, still the question of the main straight. Let me know what you think of it. Maybe I'm overthinking too much. Uh, is there something that I have missed that you have seen on the onboard? Uh, looking forward to seeing you in the comments and looking forward to experiencing the car uh, later next year when someone will be able to take me out for a lap. Because at this point, even if I could afford it, mm, there's no way I'm going to get an allocation. Uh, good. Okay. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video tomorrow on the ring, etc. etc. Bye.